Okay, in this short video we're going to take a look at the hit allocation rules in Mark Herman's Empire of the Sun. This is rule 9.2F in the reprint um, second edition of the game. Uh, and this is one of the sort of more tactical puzzle aspects of the game because um, hit allocation, there's really just few rules, but the interplay between them can be a little bit complex. So it's actually a lot easier to understand what's going on uh, if you can just walk through an example. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, so let's start by um, activating some allied units. This is an offensive where the allies are actually playing Black Day, which is an air offensive. Uh, they can only activate air units. Uh, and they're going to go after two hexes. They're going to go after Bougainville in one battle, and they're going to go after Raval in the second battle. And again, this is just uh, this is just air naval. Uh, well, it's it's going to be air naval combat, but only with air uh, units on the Allied side. So the Allies have activated the first Marine air wing at Guadalcanal here to attack uh, Bougainville. We've activated this LRB, which is also going to participate in battle. And they're activating another LRB that's just um, flying up to Nauru there. They're also activating the second Marine Air Wing, which is uh, flying to Puna, um, but will not participate in the battle. They're activating the Australians. They're moving to Ley to hit Val. We've got the um, also the 5th Air Force SR uh, that's going to go to Rebel and fight in Battle B as well. Uh, now let's take a look at the Japanese reaction. Mato is coming down to fight in Rebel. And you can see up there that PA has been activated. PA is going to come down uh, and participate in the Battle of Bougainville. The 25th, uh, sorry, that's 26th the Air Flotilla is flying to Kaviang to participate in the battle at Raval. Shikaku is also coming up uh, to fight at uh, range, again participating in the battle at Raval. Um, and this is also one other sort of cute little trick that you can see here. A ground unit can react into battle hex even if there's actually no ground battle going on in the battle hex. So the Japanese in this situation are using reaction as an opportunity to pull the South Seas Brigade out of its somewhat exposed position in New Georgia and bring it back to Rabaul. So that's the actual operation and reaction. And let's just take a look at how hit allocation is going to work here. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to turn off the um, units that are not involved in the battles to make it a little easier to see. So you've only got a few units activated here. The two with uh, that are involved at Bougainville are this 5th Air Force Long Range Bomber and the 1st Marine Air Wing. So that's a total of um, 6 plus 4 gives the Allies 10 uh, combat factors in attack. And if you look at Bougainville, you've got the HIE uh, and the 25th uh, Air Flotilla, which is reduced. Uh, so the Japanese have a total of 22 uh, combat factors. This is 1943, so the Allies will have plus one. But let's assume for the sake of argument here that both sides roll a 1x result. So the Japanese with 22 are going to uh, technically be able to apply 22 hits on the Allies. Uh, the question is practically whether they can do it. Um, given the rules. The Allies also theoretically have 10 hits having rolled a 1x that they can apply against the Japanese, but again, in practical terms, given the rules, it's not going to work that way. Let's take a look and see what happens. Let's first look at the Allied damage against the uh, uh, Japanese. If you look here, you'll notice that the 25th Air Flotilla is reduced. Uh, and one of the key hit allocation rules is that you cannot eliminate a unit uh, until all other units in the combat have been reduced first. Uh, so because the HIE is a full strength unit and hasn't been reduced, uh, we can't eliminate 25th Air Flotilla until HIE is first flipped. The trick is, 
the allies have only done 10 points of damage, and the EA has a defense factor of 14. So 10 points of damage can't hit the 14. Uh, the allies did not crit, so they don't get to break the rules using the crit rule. Um, so essentially, although the allies have done 10, 10 points of damage here, or 10 hits on the Japanese, they're not going to be able to kill a step uh, because they can't flip the Hiei uh, and they can't reduce, or they can't eliminate the 25th Air Force until they first reduce the Hiei, which they can't hit. If the Allies had rolled a natural 9 for a crit at Bougainville, uh, then what would happen is they would be able to eliminate the 25th Air Force unit because a crit basically allows you to circumvent the normal rule requiring that uh, all units are reduced first before any units can be eliminated. Uh, if you envision a slightly different situation, uh, let's say we pull the 25th Air Force uh, out of that battle, uh, if the Allies were only attacking the Hiei, then the effect of a crit would be that the Allies could actually flip the Hiei, uh, because there are two effects of a crit. The first one has to do with um, circumventing the reduced unit rule, and the second one allows you to essentially, in a case where you mathematically cannot achieve a hit because you don't have enough uh, factors to do it, uh, it allows you to inflict a step loss on the unit in the stack with the lowest defense. So there you go on that side. If you turn it around and look at the 22 points of damage that the, um, that the Japanese have done to the Allies uh, under normal circumstances, the LRB has a 10 defense strength. The Marine Air Wing has a 10 defense strength. So if we were just going ahead and uh, applying damage normally, um, you'd think that you'd be able to flip each of those because remember, you can't kill one until you've reduced both. So applying 20 points of damage, um, you would flip each of those. But here's the challenge. Uh, the Allies have two units operating at range. Uh, both of those are air units. They're both operating at range outside the battle hex. The Japanese only have one uh, unit that is capable of fighting at range. The HEA is a surface unit, has no air capability. The 25th Air Force can hit at range, but because the Japanese only have one unit capable of hitting at range, the Japanese can only apply damage to one of these two units here. They have to choose which one. And although they're doing 22 points of damage, they can't apply all those 22 points of damage to the one unit that they can hit because once they flip it, um, they can't eliminate it unless the other unit is also reduced. But since the other unit will be at full strength, uh, 12 of the 22 damage points are going to go unused. Basically, as a, as a combination of, in one case, the reduced unit rule and in the other case, the air parity rule, um, each side is going to end up doing less damage than it might otherwise have done in this combat. Well, let's take a quick look at this battle up here. Let's turn off the South Seas. Look now at the battle at Rabaul. There are just two Allied units participating here. The Australians and the 5th Air Force, both short range. The 2nd Marine Air Wing, you'll notice because of its parenthesized uh, extended range uh, and the fact that it used its extended range during movement, it's not allowed to participate in this battle. So the Allies only have 20 factors here. And uh, basically, if you look at what the uh, Japanese have defending, you've got the Aoba, the Kamikaze, and the 21st uh, Air Flotilla, all of which are reduced. Um, so those units are not going to be able to be hit until all of the other um, Japanese units are first reduced. And since the Allies are only coming with 20 factors, obviously that's not going to happen. So you've got the Yamato at 18, which could be hit. Um, you've got the 26th Air Flotilla with the 10 defense, which could be hit. And you've got the Shokaku um, with a uh, 12 defense, which could be hit. Um, so if we assumed for a minute that the Allies rolled a 1x result, uh, that would be 20 hits. Uh, they could flip any one of the Yamato, uh, the 26th Air Flotilla, or the Shokaku, and uh, they couldn't hit anything else. Uh, you'll notice the Yamato is a replaceable unit, uh, the 26th Air Flotilla is also a replaceable unit, 
Jakaku, by virtue of that small yellow circle, is not a replaceable unit, so that might factor into the Allies' choice. Uh, but again, none of the reduced strength units in the hex here could be hit um, by the uh, by the Allies. Um, the uh, uh, the Japanese could uh, and and just another quick. Um, so this can sometimes be a little confusing too, but basically the units in a battle hex uh, always fight whether they've been activated or not. So the Aoba, the Kamikaze, and the 21st Air Flotilla will all contribute their um, combat strengths to this battle, but because they have not been activated, they will not be able to uh, move in post-battle movement. The uh, Just checking air parity here, you'll notice that the Japanese have actually three units that are capable of fighting at range. The 21st Air Flotilla, even though it's not activated and it's in the battle hex, it is an air unit, so it uh, counts as being capable of fighting at range. Uh, you also have the 26th Air Flotilla and the Shikaku, so there are three Japanese units that can fight at range. There are only two allied units, so the Japanese will be able to damage both of the allied units. Uh, and the allied units, there are two range-capable units here, uh, and there are only two Japanese units that are fighting at range, so we could damage both of those units if we generated enough hits, but obviously we, we are not going to be able to uh, generate enough hits to, um, uh, to do that. Um, so that's a quick overview of a couple of relatively simple cases uh, of the application of the hit allocation rules.